Thank you for joining The Right Dose. We will take a trip through the science behind pesticide use in Florida agriculture. Our goal is to educate pesticide applicators and the public in the critical areas of integrated pest management according to Florida regulations. So, sit back, relax, and put your learning hat on as we discuss the right dose and how we can possibly impact our environment, our economy, and our communities. Welcome to the right dose. Today we're going to be discussing chapter one. This is going to be your study guide for the pesticide licensing that we're going to be discussing every chapter with you. So hopefully our discussion is going to be productive and it's going to help you clarify some of the concepts that you have when you're preparing yourself for, the, for acquiring the pesticide license. So chapter one is important because we're talking about laws. And we have to follow the law when we're applying pesticides. Florida has a robust agriculture, a robust landscaping industry. So we use pesticides regularly. So it is important for us as applicators to understand why we have to comply with these laws. Today we have Mrs. Aja Paolillo. She's the multi-county citrus agent for Hardy, DeSoto, and Manatee counties. And we also have Mr. Luis Rodriguez. He is a small farms extension agent for Polk County. And I am Jonah Bosquez, Hardy County Ag Agriculture Extension Agent. So today, again, let's dive in the topics. First, Aja, uh, talk to us about those laws and why are they so important? Give us the background information on that, please. So as Jonah mentioned, you know, we do use a lot, a large amount of pesticides here in the state. Um, so those laws are enacted to be able to really regulate the use of pesticides, their safety once they're used, where they go in the environment. So the purpose of these laws is to help minimize the impact that these pesticides have on the environment also to minimize the human exposure to pesticides and also to help the public stay safe from pesticides that are applied in the state. Okay, thank you. So Luis, uh, talking about laws, which agencies are the ones that are responsible for enforcing these laws? When you get in trouble, who is going to visit you at the farm? So uh, let's start with, this, uh, with the first thing, which is going to be the federal law that covers all pesticide application in the whole nation, which is called FIFRA, which is basically an acronym for Federal Insecticide Fungicide Prodentancy Act. That's basically going to be your national law. Then between that, the agency that enforces that law is going to be the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Those are the ones that will enforce FIFRA across the rest of the states in the nation. And here in Florida, the Department uh, of Agriculture, we would like to call FDAG, which means Florida Department of Agriculture Consumer Services, is the one that basically provides the laws, um, sorry, the licensing to the uh, applicators. So again, we got the national law, which is enforced by EPA, and then is FDAG that basically regulates uh, pesticide applicators here in Florida. So again, with that, we have another agency that is UFIFAS, and we work for UFIFAS, which is the University of Florida, and it, play, it plays a role, an important role in pesticide management. Can we discuss that uh, further, Agent? Absolutely, sure. So the agencies that Luis discussed, those are the regulatory agencies that we have. So UFIFAS, we are not regulatory. We are an institution, an educational institution. So our role is to provide those educational materials and training to pesticide applicators so that they are better equipped to not only pass the exam to receive their license, 
Um, you know, this is the core. So we're talking about the initial first part of the license, but as well as the other categories that are involved. Um, but not only to, like I said, prepare them for those exams, but also to make sure that they know the necessary safety precautions um, that go along with having the responsibility of a customs officer. So being an educational institution, we have the sole duty of providing educational materials to pesticide applicators, to producers, and to consumers as well. As a consumer, I may not be aware that there are different classes of pesticides out there. We have a blanket statement in the news about pesticides and how uh, detrimental they can be or how positive they will be, but there are different types of pesticides. There is a category of pesticides that needs to be defined, which is a restricted use pesticide, right? What is that? Uh, definition. Can you de define what is a restricted use pesticide, please? Yes, and it says in the name, it's a pesticide that is restricted, that in order to use that pesticide, you have to have a license. And why and or how is a pesticide considered restricted uh, is because of the harm for that it can make into the environment, even though you're still following label uh, precautions. So this is the um, the APA is the one that will basically say what pesticide is low risk, meaning that doesn't have a high risk for the environment or for human uh, for human health. And then they got restricted use pesticide, which may pose a little more risk, and that's why they're restricted. In order to use this pesticide, you have to have a license. In the category specifically, where well, you're gonna be using this, uh, this restricted use pesticide. Okay, cool. Under what chapters do we find these laws? And this is very important. Let me give you some context on this question. This is very important for pesticide applicators uh, to prepare for their licensing. That's why we're doing these videos. So uh, pesticide applicators need to know where these laws are located in our code of law. So which chapters are the ones where it specifically states these laws? Um, well, a chapter really is part of the Florida statutes. So let's, I just want to make sure that that's a clarification. So it is part of the Florida statutes. Um, we have, I believe, about five different chapters that do pertain to pesticide use in Florida. But the three that we mainly use um, when we're talking about certified applicators is going to be chapter 388, chapter 482, and chapter 487. Now, 388 is normally um, considered like mosquito control uh, pest chapter. So those are gonna be for those public officials who are performing mosquito control for the sake of the public health. Um, chapter 482 is labeled as structural. And what that also entails is um, pest control operators who are working with some structural um, categories such as termite wood destroying organisms. But chapter 482 also encompasses all of the landscape maintenance technicians. Um, anybody that's applying fertilizer or herbicides to landscape, um, lawns, um, flower beds, that sort of thing. Then chapter 487 basically is our agricultural commodities and then anything that doesn't fall under those other two chapters, such as uh, public utilities spraying on the right of way of a roadside or um, you know, on a solar panel field, that sort of thing. So those are our three chapters that we mainly deal with when we're talking about pesticide licensing. Thank you for that. So the next question is going to be important to define as well. There's different categories of, of pesticides. There are different categories of applicators as well. There's commercial applicators, there's public applicators, and then there are private applicators. Can we define the differences be between these categories and by the way can you talk about how many categories of uh, licensing we have in florida all right so we got approximately 34 licenses here in florida between all these three chapters uh, and depending where you're going to be applying your pesticide it's going to be the category that you're going to be needing for example if you're going to be applying and long and ornamental bedding plants in urban areas, you may be needing the limited long ornamental license. 
But if you're going to be applying on row crops, then there's an actual category for row crops. So depending on where you're going to be applying is the category that you're going to be needing. So a little research will be needed in order to know what category is the one that you need. And you can actually always call UFI pass and you can actually get that information with us if you are not sure what license you need. But we got three categories of applicators. We got, as Jonah said, public, uh, commercial, and then private. I'm going to start first with the private. A private applicator is a person that only will apply his restricted use pesticide in his own property. He's not allowed to apply anywhere else, only in his property. So that's going to be the private applicator, says the name, in his own property. So if you work for any kind of government agency, any city, any county agency, and you're going to be applying pesticides because of for your job, then that means you're going to be a public applicator. We three are all public applicators because we work for um, either the county or the university, and that's going to be your public agency. And then we got the commercial applicators, which is basically mostly these contractors, pesticide contractors, that basically gain something because of their service, either get, get some kind of revenue or because of their services, they have some kind of salary or something that they're gaining out of their services. So that's what we got. Commercial is contractors, public applicators are um, employees for a government, and then private applicators are basically people that are only going to be applying this pesticide on their own property. And that's the main difference between the three types of categories. In conclusion, there are many things that you need to study up on before you take the pesticide applicator exam. First thing that you have to do is that you have to talk to your county extension agent and get some information from them on what study materials you're going to need. Second, you're going to have to study up on the laws. The laws apply to you, even if you're a private applicator. There are regulatory agencies, there are educational agencies, and there are other agencies that oversee what happens in, in the pesticide application process, as well as provide support for you. And this is the right dose.